name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of Tenon Valley. Truth is, um, presenting is just a tool. What's really important is being able to be here on stage. Okay, so this is a tool that is going to make you really think about your business and find all the kind of tiny holes, tiny loops that your idea has and that your prototype has so that no one else can actually basically ask you something and caught, catch you off guard. The point here is to learn about your business. And that should be the goal. This is a reflection of how good you know your business. If you do a crap representation, people will automatically translate to he doesn't know his industry. So you need to make a difference. Because if not, no one is going to remember you. Now, what's the normal process for startups and ideas and stuff like that? And this is the reason why presenting and doing good presentations is extremely important. Is normally you have the moment where people have an idea. That most startups, except if you're an MBA, of course, most startups will get founded by technical people because in most cases you're either doing a mobile app or you're doing a blah blah blah, and there has there is some degree of technology involved in it. So there's always some technical people in the in the team. My point is, most people that are technical they have a lot of problems. Okay, you know the problem is the truth is that most technical people. Are in this guy. You don't want to release stuff because it's not finished, it's not ready, whatever it is, and that causes a lot of issues. Well, what's going on is that you guys are terribly at uh, explaining what you're doing. Really bad. Most entrepreneurs are really, really bad at explaining what they're doing. This is a critical thing. Products don't get sold or bought into or used because they're good, but because people know them. <coughs> Of course, if your product is even good, then even better, because they'll pay you more and faster. But that's not the point. If you actually take history, we have Microsoft. Okay, and this is the truth. If you tell the right story, people use your stuff. If your stuff doesn't work, you will know about it. But if your stuff is the best thing around, but no one uses it, you won't even know that. And that's the whole point of the game. You're not going to get it right the first time, you're not going to get it right the second time, you're definitely not going to get it right the third time either. But, you need people to use it. When we talk about who should you explain this to, you have different, uh, different people. The first one is obviously the customers, okay, supposed to potential customers. The second group is media, okay, and finally this guys, the investors, okay, the guys with the money. The thing about the audience is that these are really profiles. There are not really people. Okay, so what, what's going to happen is in most audiences, what you're going to have is a combination of profiles. So one person might be an investor, but could also be a potential customer. Okay? Some people can be a journalist, but could also be a potential customer. Or the three of them. Okay? Mike Arrington, the founder of TechCrunch, he's an investor, he's media, and he's a customer. Okay? The point is, there's, there's this notion that I call the proxy customer, which means even though there might be, as you say, people in the audience that are not your target customer, these people tend to be highly connected, which means that most definitely might know someone that could be your customer. Okay, so never forget that. Don't think that because you don't have the right audience, it's not going to help you. Now, typical pitch problems that happen all the time. Number one, if you don't tell me what you're doing in 30 seconds, you shouldn't be pitching. Okay? People that take 25 minutes to explain what they're doing clearly show that A, they haven't done any training, B, they haven't done any homework. And because if you know your industry, it takes you 30 seconds to explain what you're doing. Okay? So, train. And this is part of why you're here. But train hard. The point here is that bust your asses. This is not easy. Okay, doing a good presentation takes a lot of effort. Presenting quickly and efficiently takes a lot of effort. So train. My first suggestion would be train and pitch to someone that has nothing to do with your industry. If it's a she, even better. Okay? And this is the reason. Okay, so trust me, this is not, I'm not joking here. 
pitch it to the female population and someone that's actually detached or removed from your industry. The other ones that if they don't get it, you're doing it wrong. Trust me, if you tell it to your mom and your mom gets it, you're nailing your presentation. That is your goal. That should be your benchmark. I don't care about the audience, I don't care that your mom is not technical, that she's not an investor. She's your mom, okay? And if she has to tell you, I don't understand what you're talking about, she will tell you that, okay? It's unfit to love, what we call it. Now, the second typical issue that I see over and over again is the use of technical work. Now, being social is not a feature. If in 2014 you are not social, you're just bloody retarded, okay? This 10 years ago, it was a feature. Today, it's not. Having a mobile app is not a feature either, except in very few cases. Okay, so do not pitch the same as, oh my god, we're doing it in Android, yay! Okay, this is not important. I don't care. I want to listen to what actually, what are you building? What are you solving? Now, the finally and most important one is, now, if there is one question, if there is one point that people need to take out from your presentation, is this one. Is why do you matter? Why are you building what you're building? Why are you doing what you're doing? Exactly. You should first tell me why are you building this? What is the point? I'll give you an example. There's a team in Barcelona which supposedly I'm assuming because I haven't seen it has a fantastic technology for zooming in and zooming out. On Monday it was like so why are you doing this? No, because restaurants and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but why are you doing this? And in the end, they basically told us, well, the thing is, we have this amazing technology and we don't know what to do with it. And I'm like, okay, so that is a problem. Okay, so find your problem. Tell me what are you solving. The number one thing you need to say. Why am I doing this? A why is not a what. Remember this. You'll see how every single presentation that starts here is nearly most probably going to start with a what we do, not why we do it. Now, it's extremely important that you always understand who's sitting there. And you're going to experience it during the six weeks, but it's really important always to um, perceive what the others are perceiving. So, the first thing that you need to understand is if you ever see an investor, do not pitch them. So, do not pitch them. Now, talk with them. If you have a conversation, the question will eventually happen. And the question would be, oh, so what do you do? And at that point, you tell them what you do. Do not go roaming around pitching people, okay? So, just so you get what is the life of an investor. Well, these people, they get pitched between 20 to a lot more, depending on the country you are, times a day. That's exhausting. That's really tiring. And most than tiring, what it means is that most probably whatever you're pitching, they've either invested or they've seen before. So don't be fancy. Don't think you're going to be smart. Don't use smart words. Just get to the point. Tell them what you're doing and why you're doing it differently. <coughs> And again, do not use fluffy words. Do not throw the end to end, we are doing the big data thing. They don't care. Those are marketing terms. What I want to know is what are you solving and how much money can you make? Okay, two questions. Very easy question. Media. They normally get pitched slightly less, but the pitch is normally worse. So with an investor, you normally do a one-to-one, -one, so you will pitch the investor and you will have at least some kind of, some degree of human connection. When it comes to the press, you guys go crazy. And you, you basically write this outlandish press release. You send it to every email you find that finishes with like tech, whatever, okay? Now, the problem with journalists is that, apart from being pitched and getting a lot of press releases every day, they have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So, take this into account when you're pitching, when you're sending something to a journalist, because most probably then you will get published, but with a very different idea to the one you pitched to the journalist, okay? And you'll be like, no, 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 this is not what we're doing. Okay, your fault. Okay? Now, and the third thing that is important is that these people have a tight schedule. 
they have to publish X amount of posts a day, which means they don't have time to do any research. Now, if you don't give me the data about whatever you're pitching me, I'm not going to go and look for it. So give it to me. So if you're talking about your startup, give me your logo, give me a link to your website, give me your Twitter, give me your blog. If you've been published before, give me the links where you've been published before. Do not make me go and look for them. Okay, if you make me look for them, you know what's going to happen? Is I'm not going to look for them. Okay, so I'm just going to archive your email. Or leave it there until it kind of goes down on the screen. <coughs> And finally, journalists, what they do is they sell to their audience. So I'll give you just one quick hint. If you ever want to be published, whatever you're writing to the journalist, think about this in, in this way. If I saw this published on a website, would I care? Would I actually read it? If your answer is no, do not send it. This is very typical when someone launches a new version of their app. Oh, we're going to get covered. We're going to tell TechCrunch that we just launched a new version of our app. Like, would you fucking care if Dropbox published something saying like, hey, we are we're releasing version 1.100018. Who would read that? Someone? Either you work at Dropbox or at the competition or you wouldn't care. Well, this is the same with your, with your startups. Launching is not news. <clears throat> Creating a new version is not news. You have to give me a story to work with. If you don't give it to me, people aren't going to read it. And because I'm a journalist and I want to sell to my audience, my audience is not going to care, so I'm not going to publish it. Okay? Always think about that. Send them something that you would really like to see, that you would really like to read on the media. Now, let's go to the structure of how do you do a page set. Now I'm going to go a little bit more specific here. So this is based on what's called the Kawasaki rule, which is a guy that's called Guy Kawasaki. Um, so Guy Kawasaki, he's a, he used to be the chief evangelist for Apple like in the 80s, and now he's a business angel and investor in Silicon Valley. And he has a very good book which I highly recommend you, which is called The Art of Start. And in it, he talks about something that's called the Kawasaki rule. Which is a 10, 20, 30. So basically, he says anytime you pitch someone, you need to address 10 questions, 10 points that people are going to have in their minds in 20 minutes with 30 uh, point size fonts. Okay? This is not really right now. When he said this, there weren't that many startups, which meant that most investors would actually give you 20 minutes. Now, you get around 5 if you're lucky and around 4 if you're unlucky, okay? So this should be more like a 10 for 30 rule. The 30 size point is important. So what does the structure look like? This is the 10 questions you need to answer. This is the 10 points that need to be addressed in those 5 minutes. If someone gets out of the room with any question about these 10 points, you screwed your presentation. Okay? These are not slides, they are points, which means that for well, the number one, I could have between one to a gazillion slides to cover that point. Okay? Why the number one thing you need to answer is the problem. Why am I here? Why should you care? Okay? You see, the present presenting, and specifically this kind of pitch deck, basically follow a question and answer structure. So these points are not here, they're not order in an arbitrary way. There's actually a logic to it. And the logic is like a chain, uh, a connected answer-response structure. It's like, okay, I get the problem, so what's the solution? Okay, this is natural human reasoning. Now, the number one, as I said, is why am I here? Once you've supposedly, supposedly, because most of you do this really bad, Supposedly illustrated the problem. The number two thing is, okay, so you seem very confident that that's a problem, so how are you going to solve it? And here's where you introduce the what. You remember, first we said the why, and here you tell me the what. Okay, what do you do? The solution. Most people will directly start with the solution. What do we do? No. 
Why did you do it first? And then you give me the solution. What do I do? If at that point I actually believe you, okay, if the problem in my mind is actually real and not something that you've invented, like most times, okay, you guys will come here and you will go like, yeah, and there's this problem, and it's like, who has this problem? Well, I have it. Who else has it? Me? No, but who else? My friends? Okay? And so if I kind of believe that, the next question I'm going to ask is like, okay, so how many idiots like you are around? Okay? So I, here you need to convince me that this problem that you're talking about happens to a lot of people. The more people that this, they, the more people that ask them for this problem, the better it's going to be. The more painful the problem is, and the more you can prove me that there's a lot of pain in that market, the better it's going to be. Okay? Sometimes it's going to be hard for you to find the numbers. Okay? If you don't go and get real numbers, it's very difficult to prove this. It's very difficult to prove that this actually happens to people. Now, if you come on stage and you go and I tell you, okay, this thing, these are the typical problems that happen to startup, you're going to ask, like, yeah, like, how many startups have this issue? If I had numbers here, which one day I'll bring them, I'll tell you, out of all the demo days that happen in Europe, like 90 something percent of the, of the presentations lack this, this, and this. And this is measured by this source, and because we've done a survey, and because we've been to these 20 events during this time period. That is data. It's hard to refute data. So the more data you have, the better you're going to be there. Now at that point, I go like, okay, there's a problem. Supposedly you have a, so a solution, not the solution, but at least a solution. You just told me that there's people that are willing to pay you for that. Okay. Now, if there's that much people, that much people who else is playing there? Like if there's that money to make, there has to be someone else. So this is the point where you actually talk about the competitors. Do not be shy, trust me. Okay? There's always competition. Starting from Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, they can pivot at any time and screw you. Okay? So this is always the competition. Talk about it here. And most important, more important than talking about the competition, especially if you are doing a startup in a very crowded niche, is make sure you explain to me how are you different from them. What makes you different? And trust me, putting the background with a different color is not differentiation. Calling yourself a different thing is not being different. If you're in a really competitive space, make sure you show how different you are. The more you can show there, the better it's going to be. So make sure you, sh you tell me how different you are. If there isn't enough differentiation, people aren't going to buy it. As simple as that. Tell me how are you going to make money. And trust me, there's like 20 kinds of ways of doing money. There's not more. Okay? I either do direct sales, or I have a freemium model, or I have a sponsoring model, or I have a transaction model, or I do software as a service, or I do a sub subscription model. There's not that many. So it's just a matter of combining several of them. But just tell me how you're going to make money. Number seven is okay, I believe all this crap that you just told me. So now I need you to tell me what is the scale and how fast are you going to reach specific goals. So here's a point where you're going to tell me how your sales are going to go. So if you already have sales, it's great because you can show real data. What's going to happen in most cases is you don't have sales. So you're going to have to do spreadsheet magic and do some sales projection. This is what they teach you as an MBA, how to do this. Okay, it's just like copy, paste, okay, and that leads you... Normally you keep telling people the usual is to put one year. Anything beyond six months, it's hard to believe. Well, actually, anything beyond three months is hard to believe. But, you know, six months is acceptable. One year is a stretch. You go like, yeah, well, okay, you can see it. The point here is not to have it right. This is not about guessing the number and going after a year, hey, you know, we said 10 million and we have 10 million. 
That's not the point. This point is to show that you're not a psychopath. The point is to show that you're not retarded either. That you actually didn't pull that number out of thin air. This is about strategy, okay? A lack of strategy, it's called brute forcing. Okay, this is if you ask someone like, what's your strategy for marketing? And you'll go like, media? It's like, yeah, but what, do, what are you going to do in media? Well, media? It's like, well, but there has to be some kind of strategy. This is the same. Do not tell me that you're going to sit, do social media. What exactly? What channels in social media are you going to use? What kind of, are you going to do campaigns? Are you going to do discounts? What are you going to do with social media? Social media is a channel. It's not a tool. Okay? The marketing part has to show a strategy. You, you don't have a lot of time, which means you cannot stay there and <coughs> just show me a little bit of your ideas of how you're going to reach there. And finally, we are talking about the team. So the point here is you need to show me who your team is and why they're capable of executing all these things you just told me. So you need to connect it with something in their past that illustrates why they're the right person to do this. So there's a point, there's a reason why this structure has this order. You can definitely move some parts, but always remember that they have to be connected with the previous point. Because my brain keeps, make, keeps asking questions, okay? So the team, again, nice pictures, please. Don't put crappy pictures that are really tiny and a lot of text, okay? This is where you display your team, big pictures, big faces, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Finally, nine milestones and projections, essentially is what have you done to date and what are you going to do in the future. As long, the, the more you start moving towards um, product and uh, market fit and product validation, you need to give me metrics, you need to give me milestones that have relation to your customers. If you have one paying customer, that's a milestone. Okay, if you have traction, even a little bit, growth x over x, that's, that's a milestone. Okay, if you have two pilots running with two big customers, that's a milestone. That is the kind of thing you need to show here. Obviously, when you begin, you don't have anything. Okay, but try to start removing those crappy milestones as you start getting real things done. Now, projections, this is the moment where... So here, be ambitious, have goals, think big. It's actually easier to put this into play elsewhere than in your own local market. Always. Always. Okay, so be ambitious. Put, I mean, don't go crazy. I've had people that say like, yeah, projections, that yeah, we're going to expand to the, to the whole humanity of the 21st century. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Like, okay, so just, just don't go too crazy here. But just show that you're thinking, the reason why we do this in English is because we wanted this program to be international. If, if we didn't want that, we would have done it in Spanish. So the point here is that think beyond your local boundaries. Think beyond your local community. Start thinking, for me, every time they ask me, like, so what do you think about Europe? It's like, it's a big country. Okay? For me, it's not, it's not a continent anymore. It's a country that has different provinces, that have different culture, and some of them have different currencies. And finally, to close the presentation, there's this thing, magical thing, is called call to action. Call to action, basically, I remind you how badass we are, how painful the problem is, how cool our solution is, and how much money you're going to do with it. Okay? It's basically a reminder of, you know, remember, remember, remember me, remember me, remember the milk, remember the milk, remember the milk. Actually, the good presentations have call to actions at every point. So every two, three slides, I'll tell you, okay, if you ever have a need to tell a story, you call the guy with the hat. If you ever need to tell a story, you call the guy with the hat. So once you get out of here, if you ever need to tell a story, you call the guy with the hat. This is a call to action. This is what's called branding. And this is what you need to make yourself different, to help people remember you. Another tip, do not choose a stupid, crazy name that no one can pronounce. Trust me, I've done it, very bad idea. Okay? <laughs> Try to get something that people can pronounce, that you don't need like three different kind of degrees to understand what the hell you're talking about. Something that people can immediately tell someone, oh yeah, there's this startup in Spain or there's this startup in Germany that it's called blah 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 and they do this, you should talk with them.
That's what you want. Okay? So, this is what I told how to go from problem to solution. Uh, skip it, as we talked about. This is a different way of doing it. We can permute some of the elements. So, imagine I'm using a story to illustrate this structure. So, I will go like, oh, okay, so David, every time he goes to his job, this is what happens, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he, that's really painful for him because he's losing time doing this and that. And he's tried everything. He's tried Dropbox, he's tried Box.com, he's tried, uh, how do you call the, how do you call the Microsoft one? SkyDrive? No one uses it. So he's tried SkyDrive, blah, blah, blah. So, essentially I'm talking about my competitors. I permutate it because the story I'm talking about allows me to switch them. But there is a connection with the previous point, okay? Then I can talk about the market, and then I might talk about our solution. That he's tried all of this, and then, well, we showed them what we're doing. We went like, oh, this is exactly what I've been looking for. Because this is different because it has this, 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 and this technology. You see how you connect the things? So, this is a reference. This is a framework. Don't take it as it has to be like this. You can change some of the structure, but always remember that there is a logic to it. A presentation is about flow. If you come on stage and you go like, okay, let me tell you about the problem. And then one of your co-founders goes on stage and goes like, I'm going to talk about the solution. And now we're going to talk about business model. And now we're going to talk about the market. You totally destroy the presentation. Also, do not ever let the CTO pitch. Okay? They're really bad at doing this, normally. There are few exceptions. But I'm not a... I'm not a huge fan of letting several people pitch at the same presentation because there's always someone that's better than the other. And that difference, if it's too big, you kill the presentation. I've seen presentations where the CEO of the company was on stage, he was like, this is the share, and boom, 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 and boom, boom. And suddenly at one point he was like, and now I'm going to introduce you my amazing CTO, and this fat guy with a beard comes on stage and he goes like, hello. I'm going to tell you about our technology. You go like, no, no, this is not happening. You just kill the presentation. Okay? So be aware of this. Always put the, the person that pitches the best on stage. Use the force. Don't be an idiot. Use the person that's better at this. Things that you shouldn't do from a design point of view. For God's sake, there's this call, this thing that's called advanced search, not search tools on Google. When you go to Google Images, search tools, image size, big. Okay, you got, you got that? Big. I don't want to, see, want to see pixels there. The same one watermarks, they're lame. Do not put images with watermarks. People see them. You know, they're there for a reason. For people to go like, oh, you didn't buy this image, okay? So, and for God's sake, okay? I put an obvious thing, but do not use comic sans. Do not use Time New Roman. Okay, there's a lot of other fonts that you can use, and for God's sake, do not use colors. Okay? I don't know what happened in our generation that everyone was on vacation when Season Street talked about the color combinations. Everyone was on vacation. I don't know what happened, but it's amazing. There's this thing I call color palette, and yellow with black, it hurts. Okay? <laughs> Blue with black, it fucking hurts. Okay? If you have a dark logo and a dark background, no one can read it, not even you. So when you come on stage and I ask you, can you read your own logo? No, I can't. Then why the fuck did you put it that color, okay? So just <coughs> try and read it and see if it works or not. Said that, you can use colors, but just be zen about the colors, okay? Don't go all crazy in them. This is a list of don'ts do about the presenting. I talk about some of them. Do not put more than three words on the slide, because if you put more than three words, what you're going to do, oh, basically it's a translation of, I didn't do my homework, so I don't know what I was going to talk about here, so I'm going to turn around and I'm going to read the screen. Okay? So three words max, normally. Do, don't put shitty images. If you put a graph, have a source. Okay? This is uh, school 101, science 101. If you're quoting someone, put a source. Put the, your contact information on the final slides. Too many companies just say like, okay, thank you, and we're done. Like Carmen said today, 
We're done. No, you're not done. It's like, okay, now we're going to have an amazing presenter. Don't do this. They're like, okay, now you clap. Okay, no. There's a flow to this, and at the back, you have to have your contact information. And I'm going to give, go one step further. Is My suggestion is that you put a footer with your Twitter name and your email or your URL. Because normally the audience is watching, and at one point they're going to go like, oh, oh, that's very cool. I want to tweet about it. If I don't have your Twitter, you will screw the name as I do every single time. And then I have the startup coming to me, giving me shit, saying like, oh, thank you very much for tweeting, but our Twitter handler is nothing that has to do with the name of the company. That normally happens. And it's like, huh, you know what? Fuck you. It's your fault for not putting the Twitter when you should have put the Twitter. Okay? People do that, so put it. Um, don't put weird combinations, stick to white and black combinations most of the times. Don't use tiny phone fonts. Careful with the live demos, you're going to do live demos and they're going to go crazy. Okay, make sure, first of all, if you're going to do a live demo, make sure that it works. Try to avoid them as much as possible because normally the internet tends to not to work. If you're going to do a video, I don't know if I have it there, it's the next one. If you're going to use a video, make sure you've, you've tried it before. Make sure that the speed is right. What we've seen so many times in the Valley is, I click on the video, and the video starts going like, and I go like, just a second. You have to press space to, to, to freeze the video. So make sure it's done. Suggestion with the videos, do not record how you log in into your system. No one gives a shit about that. Show me the parts that are important. I'm telling you because I did that in many of my videos until I said like, this is so stupid, no one cares about this, okay? So, I'm talking from my experience. Do not rely on the internet. Um, don't put tables. Okay, if you're going to talk about uh, financial projections, there is no time to read a table. If you're going to send this to someone, then definitely put tables. They're going to have the time to, to scroll through the numbers. If you have a presentation and you have four minutes, there's no way in hell I can read a table. Do not use 3D graphs. They look really nice on your laptop when you're watching them. When you're over there, they look like crap. Okay, the whole shadow thing makes them really bad to actually see the data. Do not use fancy transitions. And this is not <coughs> the reason for this. Sometimes like, what happened here is I bring my own laptop and this guy told me, no, 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 you put this on a pen drive and we'll play it on a laptop. You know what normally happens is I've been using fancy transitions and suddenly the laptop has less memory and less power than my laptop. And so when I, when I hit the clicker, the screen will freeze and I'll go like, huh, click, 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 click. And 30 seconds later, my slides will go like, <laughs> okay, oh, sorry, sorry, let's go back. And going back, the same shit happens. Okay, you click once, and you go like, oh, shit, click, click, click. And you keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Waste of time. You have precious time when you're on stage. Don't waste it. Don't use fancy shit. Make it just work. This is a PDF. You don't need anything else. Now, finally, my graphs. If you add the graphs, put titles to the graph. Like, what am I seeing? Don't put numbers on the axis and just say like, okay, this is a very interesting graph. It's like, okay, what, bananas and potatoes? What is it? What am I seeing? What are the units? If you put numbers, what are the units? Don't tell me, we're going to make 2,000. <coughs> okay, 2,000 what? Dollars? Euros? 2,000K? What is it? I know this is pretty obvious. I'll actually suggest you to print the screen and when you're going through your presentation, just keep ticking to see if you're doing this or not, okay? And finally, remember to be a gypsy. A fun, make it entertaining, make it <coughs> remarkable, make it rememberable. Thank you guys.